Good morning, good morning, Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay in the comments so I'll know that you are watching. And if you're tuning in for the very first time, go ahead and type in number one in the comments. Good morning, Tanisha. As you all are coming in, type in the comments, God did it again. It's a great day to be alive. I am so thankful and so grateful that God has allowed us to see another day. Good morning, Viola. Good morning. As you all are coming in, come in with a heart of worship. Go ahead and share out the broadcast. Great morning, great morning, and happy new year to you too. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So good to see you all. Yes, God did it again. Amen. Go ahead and share out the broadcast. Go ahead and grab your water, grab your Bibles, grab your journals. Make sure you've anointed your hands this morning. Great morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Great morning, Jackie. Good morning, Natasha. Good morning. After you've shared, go ahead and type in hashtag shared. So good to see you all. Great morning, everyone, or afternoon or evening, whenever you're catching the replay. Good morning. Good morning. Great morning. So good to see you. Hello, Stacy. Jesus, the King of Kings. <laughs> Good morning. Anybody else come to worship this morning? Good morning. Before the earth was born. Good morning, Patricia. Good morning, Lisa. We bow before your throne, oh God. We just want to give you praise. Thankful tonight. for another day to worship. We just want to give you praise. We cannot make it without you. Hallelujah. And we cannot make it without your power. We cannot make it without his power. Do not own the rights to this music. He is a great God. Yes. You are the substance of all human virtues. Good morning. Come your on in, everyone. Knowing, all yes, hallelujah. You can do anything and everything we cannot do. He can do everything that we can't do. You are everything good that we would like to be. You're all important. You're all powerful. You're all omniscient. You're all knowing. Amen. Great morning, everyone. You're omnipresent. You are present everywhere. And Hallelujah. we know that you are present even in this arena. Mm. Oh, Thank God. you, Lord. Great morning, everyone. He 
he's worthy to receive all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. I believe we'd like to give you praise. Mm. Everybody bow down and worship. Come on. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. wake up to worship the Lord this morning. I need to end this song because I don't want the broadcast to be interrupted, but somebody type in the comments, it's a great day to worship the Lord. It's a great day to worship the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm just so thankful that God has allowed us to see another day. Listen, it doesn't matter what is going on in your life right now. It's a great day to worship the Lord. Y'all type in the comments, it's a great day to worship the Lord. I'll tell you, as soon as this new year started, all kind of things started going on, right? A um, couple of family members got sick. Um, Anthony has to get a tooth pulled. It's just all kind of craziness that's going on. And I woke up this morning saying, you know what, regardless, it's still a great day to worship. <laughs> it's still a great day to worship. As soon as you open up your mouth and make a declaration that we're going deeper, we're going deeper in God, right? All kind of madness breaks out, but that's to be expected. <laughs> that's to be expected. Um, so good morning. So glad you all are here. Um, excuse me. Hold on. <laughs> I am good. I just have a little cold. It is just a common cold. Um, just a common cold. But excuse me this morning. A little watery eyes and all that stuff. So um, I'm just so glad to be here. All right. If you have not already, make sure that you have anointed your hands and go ahead and type in the comments. My hands are blessed. Everything that I touch is blessed. Everything that I touch prospers. Everything that I touch multiplies. Everything I touch turns to gold amen these blessed oily anointed hands will lay hands on the sick they will be healed and they will recover in jesus name amen i am praying for you and your family maria i release the peace of god and the strength of god over you and your family in jesus name amen all right, you all. So if you're new here to the broadcast, welcome. So glad you're here. We are in year number four. You all type a number four in the comments. We're at year number four of reading through the one year Bible. Some of you have been reading with me since 2019, all of 2020, all of 2021, and you're doing it again in um, 2022 and I'm excited about it. Listen, I am so excited about it. Um, so if you're just joining us today, you can jump right in, no need to get behind. And remember um, the video that I shared where I gave a few tips, even if you fall behind, skip ahead, right? If you fall behind, skip ahead. You don't want to intentionally fall behind, but good morning, Vanessa, but if for some reason you fall behind, skip ahead. If you fall behind more than two days, just skip ahead, right? It, it's not a big deal. Just skip ahead because uh, we can use the fact that we're behind a few days as an excuse to just quit and just throw the whole year away and say, I'll start next year. Hashtag ask me how I know. Um, as many years as I've been reading through um, the one year Bible. And now when I say I've been reading through the one year Bible, that does not mean that I did not miss a day or two or three or maybe even 10, right? When I first began reading. But um, one thing I will say that I've learned that if you fall behind, just skip ahead. Um, no need to try to get caught up. Um, and what else? I think that's it. Oh, I didn't turn off my notifications. So, all right, um, let's go ahead. That's, that's right. Just skip ahead if you're behind. And that's all throughout the year. Um, if you happen to fall behind, life happens, just skip ahead. And so I'll just keep reminding you all of that. All right, so I saw that some of you have already started. Type at least one thing or two things. I have two fingers up in the comments um, that you're thankful for today. Listen, I'm thankful for life. I'm thankful for health, right? <laughs> um, thank you. 
just so thankful that God woke me up and allowed me to see another day. That's right. Let me pin this because I did not say this. So I do have a little cold. I woke up um, this morning. I don't normally get headaches every once in a while. I got a little headache and I was just like, you know what? The devil is a liar. <laughs> and like I always say, as long as we're living and breathing, right? The enemy will always try to attack us in one of two one of two areas, either in our bodies through sickness and disease or in our mind. Somebody say the devil is a liar, right? So, Father, we thank you on this morning. We thank you for life. and We thank you for good health. We thank you for waking us up this morning and allowing us to see another day. We are so incredibly thankful for another chance to get it right. We are thankful um, for another opportunity to come together and to worship you and to spend time in your word. There's no better way to start the day other than with you and in your word. And we're so thankful. We are thankful, God, for a sound mind. We are thankful for a sound mind. Amen. Thankful for a sound mind. Thank you for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time with you. Thank you for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time in your word. Yes, Tracy, we're thankful for family. We are thankful for everything in Jesus name. Amen. That's right. Being right in mind in spite of. That's right. Listen, I'm just so thankful that God has not didn't allow the enemy to have his way with me. And I say that every day, like, God, I thank you for a sound mind. So incredibly thankful. So we're going to go ahead and dive in. Yes, a sound mind. Listen, because it could have been another way. It could have been another way. And that's why I'm so big on renewing the mind daily, right? Just spending time in the word, um, pulling down those negative thoughts, those lies, and replacing the lies with truth. And that's such a great habit to get into. Um, and if you're in the wellness community, right, you know, um, the study that we're going through right now, I stressed how... The, renew, the mind renewal activities are the most important, even if you get behind on your reeling or, you know, get behind. Um, it's so important to make sure that we don't skip the mind renewal activities and that we're doing that daily. And so if we, again, whenever you're trying to, it's 445, we'll dive in in a minute. Whenever you're trying to create new healthy habits, right, it's always good to attach it to a habit that you've already established, right? So for me, I would always forget to take my vitamins. <clears throat> I would forget to drink that morning cup of water. And it just made sense that we're already up in the morning reading our Bible. We've created this habit. So I attach this trying to create this new habit of remembering to do certain things every day. That's why you see me doing certain things in the morning during the video, because um, it's easier to create new habits when you're already attached to a habit that's already been created. So does that make sense? Good morning, Andrea. And so I do that with a lot of things that I do. And I, and I talked about this in a video. It's really it's called habit stacking. Um, and so, uh, yeah, what was I talking about? Totally lost my train of thought. I am so sorry. I totally lost my train of thought. So with that being said, let me go ahead and get the one year Bible pulled up. And when my thought comes back to me, anyone else lose their thought in mid sentence ever? Does that ever happen? As soon as my thought comes back to me, <laughs> I'll share whatever it was that I was supposed to share. I'm like, how do you lose that thought in mid sentence? <laughs> oh, yes. Um, Yes, and that's why it's so important to make sure um, mental fitness, you know, and, and listen, we, we, we uh, set these goals for like our physical fitness, right? Physical fitness, we set these goals um, for our spiritual fitness or spiritual wellness, whatever you call it. Mental fitness, our mental wellness is just as important and we want to make sure that we're doing something every day, right? Uh, to care for our mind, to care for our body, and to care for our spirit. You know, it's all important. And so um, a lot of times we forget, we forget that. You know, we forget to take care of our mental health. We forget, at least I know that I did for a really long time. And my mental health is important to me. After battling through some of the things that I've battled through, 
my mental health is important to me and I do everything that I can <laughs> to make sure that I care for my mental health. And so there's just lots of lots of things to do that, lots of ways to do that. So let's dive in to the one year Bible. All right, let's dive in. Today is Tuesday, January 11th, the 11th already. We begin our reading today as usual. If the volume in the is Old okay, Testament. type a number two. And this time from the book of Genesis, chapter 20. I have my essential oils going behind me from we'll my nose and my head. Chapter 26, verse 16. We'll read about the bride. The hey, bride Cheryl. had nothing uh, to go on but the treasures she saw and the words she heard from uh, the servant. In spite of those who urged her to delay, she made a decision of faith and said, I will go. Well, of course, this is an illustration of personal salvation. The Spirit speaks to us about Christ Good and shows morning. us his treasures. Good morning. And we trust Christ, even though we have never seen him. We'll read about the bridegroom. The bridegroom was last seen on the mountain with his father. Now he comes to meet his bride at even time. That is what Jesus Christ will do when he returns for his church. Then we shall see him and be like him. So good to see and you, as Cheryl. As we move into Genesis chapter 25, the center of attention now shifts from Abraham to Isaac. Isaac the heir, we'll read about him. God's resurrection power continued to work in Abraham. He married again and begat six more sons. God is not likely to do this for people today, but the spiritual lesson is clear. We should be fruitful even in old age. Abraham distinguished Isaac from his other sons. He gave them yes. generous gifts, but he made Isaac his heir. God, of course, gives good things to unsaved people. But only those who are his children, through faith in Christ, can claim their inheritance. Thank you, Peggy. We'll read about Isaac the orphan. Abraham lived by faith and died by faith, and God kept his word. Isaac and Ishmael together mourned their father's death. For death is a human experience that binds all men together. Unsaved relatives share in times of sorrow, but their grief is hopeless without Jesus Christ. Compare Ishmael's death with that of Abraham. We'll read about Isaac the intercessor. Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah. For 20 years, they waited for a family that did not come. God blessed Isaac in everything but the thing he wanted most. Hmm. And Rebekah knew that God had promised descendants. I did, Valerie. So Isaac laid it's hold negative. of the promise and prayed. <laughs> Thank you. Through prayer, lays Praise hold of God's Lord, word right? and seeks to accomplish God's purposes. We'll read about Isaac the father. God gave them twin boys who were opposite each other in every way. He also gave them a revelation that the younger I son, went on Jacob, Sunday morning. would carry on the messianic line. And for that reason, you would think that Isaac would have favored Jacob. But the physical won over the spiritual. Esau pictures the man of the world who despises the eternal and lives for the temporal. And now, let's begin our reading today here in the Old Testament. January I'm going to go 11, again on Wednesday, tomorrow. Genesis chapter 24, verse 52. Just to make sure. Through chapter 26, verse 16. All right, here we go. At this reply... Abraham's servant bowed to the ground and worshipped the Lord. Then he brought out silver and gold jewelry and lovely clothing for Rebekah. He also gave valuable presents to her mother and brother. Then they had supper, and the servant and the men with him stayed there overnight. But early the next morning he said, Send me back to my master. But we want Rebekah to stay at least ten days, her brother and mother said. Then she can go. But he said, Don't hinder mm. my return. The Lord has made my mission successful, and I want to report back to my master. Well, they said, We'll call Rebecca okay. and ask her today. what she thinks. So they called Rebecca. Are you willing to go with this man? They asked her. And she replied, Yes, I will go. So they said goodbye to Rebecca and sent her away with Abraham's servant and his men. The woman who had been Rebekah's childhood nurse went along with her. They blessed her with this blessing as she parted. Our sister, may you become the mother of many millions. 
May your descendants overcome all their enemies. Then Rebekah and her servants mounted the camels and left with Abraham's servant. Meanwhile, Isaac, Good whose morning. home was in the Negev, had returned from Beer Lahiroi. One evening, as he was taking a walk out in the fields, meditating, he looked up and saw the camels coming. When Rebecca looked up and saw Isaac, she quickly dismounted. Who is that man walking through the fields to meet us? She asked the servant. And he replied, It is my master. So Rebecca covered her face with her veil. Then the servant told Isaac the whole story. And Isaac brought Rebekah into his mother's tent, and she became his wife. He loved her very much, and she was a special comfort to him after yes. the death of his Amen. mother. Now Abraham married again. Keturah was his new wife. She bore him Zimran, Jokchan, Midan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Jokchan's two sons were Sheba and Dedan. Dedan's descendants were the Asherites, Letushites, and Leumites. Midian's sons were Ephah, Ephur, Anak, Abida, and Eldaha. These were all descendants of Abraham through Keturah. Abraham left everything he owned to his son Isaac. But before he died, he gave gifts to the sons of his concubines and sent them off to the east, away from Isaac. Abraham lived for 175 years, and he died at a ripe old age, joining his ancestors in death. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah near Mamre in the field of Ephron, son of Zohar the Hittite. This was the field Abraham had purchased from the Hittites, where he had buried his wife Sarah. After Abraham's death, God poured out rich blessings on Isaac, who settled near Beer Lahiroi in the Negev. This is the history of the descendants of Ishmael, the son of Abraham through Hagar, Sarah's Egyptian servant. Here is a list by their names and clans of Ishmael's descendants. The oldest was Nebaioth, followed by Kedar, Abdiel, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma. Masa, Hadad, Pima, Jadur, Nephish, and Kadima. These twelve sons of Ishmael became the founders of twelve tribes that bore their names, listed according to the places they settled and camped. Ishmael finally died at the age of 137 and joined his ancestors in death. Ishmael's descendants were scattered across the country from Havila to Shur which is east of Egypt, in the direction of Ashur. The clans descended from Ishmael, camped close to one another. This is the history of the family of Isaac, the son of Abraham. When Isaac was 40 years old, he married Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel the Aramean from Padan Aram and the sister of Laban. Isaac pleaded with the Lord to give Rebekah a child because she was childless. So the Lord answered Isaac's prayer, and his wife became pregnant with twins. But the two children struggled with each other in her womb. Thank you. So she went to ask the Lord about it. Why is this happening to me, she asked. And the Lord told her, The sons in your womb will become two rival nations. One nation will be stronger than the other. The descendants of your older son will serve the descendants of your younger son. And when the time came, the twins were born. The first was very red at birth. He was covered with so much hair You're ahead that of us. one would think he was wearing a piece of clothing. So they called him Esau. Then the other twin was born with his hand grasping Esau's heel. So they called him Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when the twins were born. As the boys grew up, Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open fields, while Jacob was the kind of person who liked to stay at home. Isaac loved Esau in particular because of the wild game he brought home, but Rebekah favored Jacob. One day when Jacob was cooking some stew, 
Esau arrived home exhausted and hungry from a hunt. Esau said to Jacob, I'm starved. Give me some of that red stew you've made. This was how Esau got his other name, Edom, Red. Jacob replied, All right, but trade me your birthright for it. Look, I'm dying of starvation, said Esau. What good is my birthright to me now? So Jacob insisted. Well, then swear to me right now that it is mine. So Esau swore an oath, thereby selling all his rights as the firstborn to his younger brother. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and lentil stew. Esau ate and drank and went on about his business, indifferent to the fact that he had given up his birthright. Now a severe famine struck the land, as it happened before in Abraham's time. So Isaac moved to Gerar, where Abimelech, king of the Philistines, lived. The Lord appeared to him there and said, Do not go to Egypt. Do as I say. And stay here in this land. If you do, I will be with you and bless you. I will give all this land to you and your descendants, just as I solemnly promised Abraham, your father. I will cause your descendants to become as numerous as the stars, and I will give them all these lands. And through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. I will do this because Abraham listened to me and obeyed all my requirements, commands, regulations, and laws. So Isaac stayed in Gerar. And when the men there asked him about Rebekah, he said, She is my sister. He was afraid to admit that she was his wife. He thought they would kill him to get her, because she was very beautiful. But sometime later, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out a window and saw Isaac fondling Rebekah. Abimelech called for Isaac and exclaimed, She is obviously your wife. Why did you say she was your sister? Because I was afraid someone would kill me to get her from me, Isaac replied. How could you treat us this way? Abimelech exclaimed. Someone might have taken your wife and slept with her, and you would have made us guilty of great sin. Then Abimelech made a public proclamation. Anyone who harms this man or his wife will die. That year, Isaac's crops were tremendous. He harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted, for the Lord blessed him. He became a rich man, and his wealth only continued to grow. He acquired large flocks of sheep and goats, great herds of cattle, and many servants. Soon the Philistines became jealous of him, and they filled up all of Isaac's wells with earth. These were the wells that had been dug by the servants of his father Abraham. And Abimelech asked Isaac to leave the country. Go somewhere else, he said, for you have become too rich and powerful for us. Pause that. I normally don't pause it in the middle of us reading, but um, I wanted to share something. So, uh, verse 8, uh, verse 7, it says, Abraham lived for 175 years and he died at a ripe old age, having lived a long and satisfying life. Having lived a long and satisfying life. We're about to go into Matthew. Um, verse 8 in the one-year Bible and so I wrote in my Bible and I highlighted this um, Y'all type this in the comments. I will not die young, right? I will die at a ripe old age having lived a long and satisfying life the spirit of death will pass over my house right the spirit of death will pass over my house i remember there was a time because so many family members have died of so many different illnesses at young ages at fairly young ages um i remember when fear right tried to like grip me like this fear where i would be afraid to go to sleep at night because i would be so scared that i wouldn't wake up in the morning and you know and that's why in the morning when i wake up the first thing i'm saying is like god i thank you it's a great day to be alive like you allowed me to see another day god i thank you and so um when i in the beginning of the new year 
I'm like, this is amazing. This is going to be great. We're going deeper in God. I'm going to get more people in the Word. We're going somewhere. And then I get a little sick. Like, first started with my daughter. Then I get a little sick. And then fear. I'm like, and listen, if there's anyone on here, right? I'm not minimizing this, but I'm just speaking for me. I was just like, oh my gosh, maybe I have COVID. Oh my gosh, I'm going to die. Oh my gosh. And fear, again, tried to rear its ugly head. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I will not die young. And so just reading this again as a reminder, just blessed me. And he died at a ripe old age, having lived a long and satisfying life, right? Keisha. You will not die young. You will die at a ripe old late old age, having lived a long and satisfying life. The spirit of death will pass over me, right? The spirit of death will pass over my house. That's right. The spirit of death will pass right on by me. And so I just wanted to kind of share that as we were reading again this morning. <laughs> January 11th. Matthew chapter 8, verses 18 through 34. That's right. When Jesus noticed how large the crowd was growing, he instructed his disciples to cross to the other side of the lake. <laughs> then one of the teachers of religious law said to him, Teacher, I will follow you no matter where you go. But Jesus said, Foxes have dens to live in, and birds have nests. But I, the Son of Man, have no home of my own. Not even a place to lay my head. Another of his disciples said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Follow me now. Let those who are spiritually dead care for their own dead. Then Jesus got into the boat and started across the lake with his disciples. Suddenly, a terrible storm came up with waves breaking into the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. <laughs> the disciples went to him and woke him up, shouting, Lord, asleep. save us. We're going to drown. And Jesus answered, Why are you afraid? You have so little faith. Then he stood up and rebuked the wind and waves. And suddenly, all was calm. The disciples just sat there in awe. Who is this? They asked themselves. Even the wind and waves obey him. Mm -hmm. Jesus arrived on the other side of the lake, in the land of the Gadarenes. Two men who were possessed by demons met him. They lived in a cemetery and were so dangerous that no one could go through that area. They began screaming at him. Why are you bothering us, son of God? You have no right to torture us before God's appointed time. A large herd of pigs was feeding in the distance, though the demons bayed. If you cast us out, send us into that herd of pigs. All right, go, Jesus commanded them. So the demons came out of the men and entered the pigs, and the whole herd plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. The herdsmen fled to the nearby city, telling everyone what happened to the demon-possessed man. The entire town came out to meet Jesus, but they begged him to go away and leave them alone. Psalm chapter 10, verses 1 through 15. Does God hide? Why do the wicked prosper? Is a perennial question God's people ask. As they consider the suffering of the godly and the security of the ungodly, they feel that God has forgotten and forsaken his people. What do y'all think? Does God hide? Person. Does God hear? Note the repetition as we read here in Psalm today. Uh, he has said in his heart. See, God hears what the ungodly say and does not approve of their pride and rebellion. The ungodly announces, I shall not be moved. God does not see what I do. Even if he does, he will never judge me. What arrogance to think that way. But a lot of people do. Does God help is another question, and the answer, of uh, course, is he does. Mm -hmm. He sees the trouble of his people, feels their grief, and helps them in the right way at the right time. After all, the Lord is king. Mm -hmm. It may look as though the ungodly are winning the day, but the Lord will triumph in the end. 
Psalm chapter 10, verses 1 through 15. O oh Lord, why do you stand so far away? Why do you hide when I need you the most? Proud and wicked people viciously oppress the poor. Let them be caught in the evil they plan for others. For they brag about their evil desires. I took they it, thank you. They praise the greedy and curse the Lord. These wicked people are too proud to seek God. They seem to think that God is dead. Yet they succeed in everything they do. They do not see your punishment awaiting them. They pour scorn on all their enemies. They say to themselves, nothing bad will ever happen to us. We will be free of trouble forever. Their mouths are full of cursing, lies, and threats. Trouble and evil are on the tips of their tongues. They lurk in dark valleys, murdering the innocent who pass by. They're always searching for some helpless victim. Like lions, they crouch silently, waiting to pounce on the helpless. Like hunters, they capture their victims and drag them away in nets. The helpless are overwhelmed and collapse. They fall beneath the strength of the wicked. The wicked say to themselves, God isn't watching. He will never notice. Arise, O Lord. Punish the wicked, O God. Do not forget the helpless. Why do the wicked get away with cursing God? How can they think God will never call us to account? But you do see the trouble and grief they cause. You take note of it and punish them. The helpless put their trust in you. You are the defender of orphans. Break the arms of these wicked, evil people. Go after them until the last one is destroyed. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn your back on evil. Mm -hmm. Then you will gain renewed health and vitality. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, amen. I told you all, right? Whenever uh, we're reading, and I hear the words, then, then you, then I. I always lean in and make sure I'm paying attention. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Don't be impressed with your own understanding. Instead, fear the Lord. First, don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Not understand, it's hard. It says wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord turn away from evil don't be impressed with your own evil wisdom fear the Lord and turn away from evil then you will have healing in your body and strength for your bones did y'all hear that then you will have healing in your body and so it's so important again we it's so easy for us right to claim the promises but we don't want to partake we need to Practice the principles, right, to participate in a promise. So are you impressed with your own understanding? Do you fear the Lord? Have you turned away from evil, right? And so it tells us right here what to do. Then you will have healing in your body and strength in your bones. So are you believing God for healing in your body? I'm telling you, you got to love the word. And whenever I hear, then I'm like, I'm leaning in. I don't know if you at all actually saw me. I was listening but when I heard then you then I kind of leaned in a little bit like literally leaned in so it's so important for us to pay attention to what comes before these promises right yes he will you know give us healing in our body and strength for our bones but we need to make sure um, all of it you know we're reminded that all of his um, promises are conditional all right so anyway um, y'all type in the comments personal devotion personal devotion listen I love I don't know about y'all but I love reading through the one-year Bible anybody else love reading and listening to the one-year Bible 
um, you know, type in personal devotion. We want to make sure that we don't just check this off our to-do list as something we did today. Like, oop, I read my Bible. We don't want to shut our Bibles and run on about our day. You want to make sure that you take some time today. It doesn't matter whether it's this morning right after. Like us in the wellness community, we sit, um, we um, move our bodies first. We do, we walk for um, 30 minutes and then we'll sit for our own personal time. Um, for personal devotion but for you it doesn't have to be in the morning but make sure you spend some time today so I have two questions um, that I wrote down um, for you to ask and then um, five strategies on how to increase our faith so this is not long I actually only have one page today <laughs> just one page so the first question um, and this is from our reading in Matthew 8 this morning some offered Jesus excuses while others followed right and those that offered excuses he's like but lord right and jesus was like no <laughs> follow me now right let the spiritually dead bury their dead you know so again some follow jesus right away as we read yesterday right and then some made excuses um so my question our question is what excuses prohibit you from following jesus christ in faith what excuses good morning good morning good morning uh good morning uh, i think i saw yolanda and melinda good morning so what excuses are prohibiting me from following jesus christ in faith am i offering excuses what excuses are prohibiting me from following jesus in faith <clears throat> second question uh, jesus called the disciples men of little faith and i believe that was in verse uh 26 Ooh, why I feel uh, no I'm like my voice uh, why are you afraid you have so little faith then he got up and rebuked the wind and waves and suddenly there was a great calm y'all type in the comments hashtag suddenly Jackie says I have none well praise the Lord I, I wouldn't say I have any now but there was a time where I had a whole lot <laughs> a whole lot of excuses um, so Jesus called the disciples men of little faith. How would he describe your faith? How would he describe my faith? So this is you asking yourself this question. What excuses prohibit me from following Jesus Christ in faith? And the second question, how would he describe my faith? Would he describe your faith as little? Oh, you of little faith, Keisha? You know, is that how he would describe your faith? So those are two questions just for you to kind of dig deeper. <clears throat> so verse 26, I'll read it again. Um, verse 26, Jesus responded, why are you afraid? You have so little faith. Then he got up. Y'all type in the comments, my faith is big. My faith is big, big. No little faith, right? My faith is big. My faith is big. Um, you have so little faith. Then he got up and rebuked the wind and waves. And suddenly there was a great calm even the winds and the waves obeyed him right and so it's just an important reminder that we too can speak to the winds and we can that's right y'all type in the comments my faith is big 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 faith <laughs> um so if being and increasing our faith requires us to trust god and again how many times have we talked about trust right during waking early for his glory everything goes back to trust and increasing our faith truly does um, require us to, tr to trust in the Lord. Um, so I wrote down five strategies or five ways to increase your faith. They're really like bullet points. They're not long at all. Um, so the first one is ask for more, right? We can literally ask for more. If um, the answer to, your, to the question, how would Jesus describe my faith, right? If you are honest with yourself and if it's small, if he would describe your faith as, oh, you have so little faith, it's all right, right? We can ask for more. So y'all type in the comments, number one, ask for more. Five strategies to increase our faith. First and foremost, ask for more. And um, Luke 17, 5, I believe. Was it Luke 17, 5? Uh, I believe it was Luke 17 5 Lord increase my faith someone double check that for me Luke 17 5 so number one we can ask for more number two 
read God's word, right? So what we're doing here is not a small thing. This is not something that we just get to do and check off our to-do list and say, I read my word today, right? It's a big deal. You are committing to show up, even if you are catching a re re replay right now, whether it's in the afternoon, in the morning. Listen, I pay attention and I see you all when you all type in replay in the comments and it truly blesses me. And then there are some of you that are reading and following along where you don't and that's okay. But just know that it's a big deal what you're doing and it's not a small thing. Um, so another way to increase our faith, number two, is read God's word. And Romans ten seventeen says, so then the word becomes, become the um, faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. So if we want to increase our faith, number one, we can ask for more. Number two, read God's word. Every time I read this word, my faith is increased. Every time I sit and read this word, whether it's one verse, the whole 20 minutes, whatever it is, my faith is always increased by reading the word hearing the word you know hearing others teach the word my faith is always increased so you want to grow your faith you want to increase your faith number one ask god for more he will give you more right you have not because you ask not number two read god's word number three by fasting and praying by fasting and praying i am always strengthened and i feel like my faith is always stronger after right um, the fourth strategy is worshiping and praising God, worshiping and praising God. I believe that we can truly say that our faith level is increased during worship. Yes, yes or yes. And number five, speak God's word. Our words have power. Our words have power. And we even see that this morning, right? Um, the disciples, okay, going back suddenly, a fierce storm struck the lake with waves breaking into the boat, but Jesus was sleeping, right? Just, just sleeping, right? And the disciples went and woke him up shouting, Lord, save us. We're going down. Anybody ever prayed that prayer? Lord, save me. I feel like I'm going down. This storm is about to take me out, right? And Jesus responded, why are you afraid? Like, why are you afraid, Keisha? You down here hollering and screaming, this little storm is not going to take you out. You have so little faith, my daughter. <laughs> then he got up, rebuked the wind and waves, and suddenly there was a great storm, right? Uh, the disciples were amazed. Who is this man, they asked. Even the winds and waves obey him. Our words have power okay so it's not just me like lord save me <laughs> i'm going down this storm and it might not be a little storm with you on a boat but whatever that situation is in your life that feels like a storm that feels like a whirlwind right we get to speak to it so number five speak god's word our words have power our words have power and our declaration for today is i decree and declare i will no longer speak discouraging and faith destroying words so are the words that you um speak encouraging your faith or are they destroying your faith are they building your faith or are they destroying your faith so i decree and declare i will no longer speak dis discouraging and faith destroying words i decree and declare someone typed this in the comments i decree and declare that i will no longer speak discouraging and faith destroying words i will only speak encouraging and faith building words our words have power so number one was ask for more number two read god's word number three was fast and pray number four was worshiping and praising god and number five was speak god's word I need to catch the replay of this i feel like my voice level is low because as i raise my voice level my head is like so I'm probably speaking a little bit softer than I usually speak. But let me know, did you all get these five points? I don't see the comments moving. Let me swipe and make sure. Did y'all get all five points? Can somebody type yes if you did? It, did, you, did anybody get all five? And the declaration? Okay, perfect. All right, so that's all I have today. I didn't have a whole lot. Um, you all can dig deeper into this, however you, you feel led to in your personal time of devotion. Oh, 
all right, it's 520. I said I was going to be off by 520. Um, but I, when we were reading uh, in Psalm, it says, their mouths are full of cursing, lies, and threats. I wrote in my Bible, it used to be me, but God, right? And I'll stop there. I remember, and I've shared this with you all before, um, just sharing that, you know, my mouth, like this, this, this mouth of mine wasn't always used, right? It wasn't always used by God. This mouth of mine used to be a tool and a, a weapon, right? In the hands, a weapon of mass destruction, I can say, um, used by the enemy, but God. And so I remember there was a time when my mouth was filled with cursing, lies, and threats. And, but God, and I just had to circle that because I was like, ooh, I felt that. Um, but God, but God, and that was because and not making excuses, but just sharing where that came from when I realized that my mouth was a weapon and that I could, it could protect me from harm. <laughs> this mouth wasn't always pretty, uh, but God, so I just thank God for change. You know, I'm not where I want to be, but I thank God I'm not where I used to be. I thank God I'm not where I used to be. And I thank God I can remember the day, the place exactly where I was sitting in my minivan, a red minivan at the time. And I remember what I had on the moment that I felt that God delivered me from the spirit of profanity. And it is a spirit, very ugly, very nasty spirit. Um, the declaration was, I decree and declare that I will no longer speak discouraging and faith destroying words hashtag waking early for his glory I decree and declare that I will no longer speak discouraging and faith destroying words our words have power our words have power right so we are declaring what does that mean that we will only speak encouraging and faith building words all right so that's it for today I feel like we did good on time um, I'm gonna try to walk this morning no, I am going to walk this morning. I am going to walk this morning, so. All right, that's it, you all. Um, that's it, that's all I have today. Man, I could talk so much about this, but I thank God for changing me. Anybody else thankful? I remember praying those prayers. God, I don't wanna be this way anymore. Just change me. Any way you change me, Lord, I'll be happy. Just change me, right? just did not want to be that person and I was so desperate for change and that's why I threw myself into this Bible and I remember my friends used to think that I'm crazy um, a good 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 friend of mine Rochelle was no longer um, here with us um, she ended up <clears throat> getting cancer and I remember praying so hard for her y'all right I remember praying and praying and I just knew be that because I prayed anybody else ever felt this way before I knew that because I prayed because I prayed because I prayed to God that she was gonna be healed and I just knew it and everyone's like oh and they're making I'm like listen I prayed she is well I prayed I prayed I prayed I prayed she's going to be fine and the day I got that call when they told me that she was no longer with us I remember being crushed I remember being crushed like what you didn't hear my prayers you didn't answer my prayer I just knew with everything in me right I was going somewhere with that and I lost my train of thought look I'm gonna blame it on this cold that I have and this headache I was going somewhere with that I'm sorry this is the second time this happened to me this morning I was going somewhere with that and the, my thought literally left my mind um, what was I talking about? All right, sorry, y'all. Um, but I do need to get off this live. Yes, and, and that's how um, I had to look at it. I remember being so heartbroken. I remember feeling like God didn't hear my prayers. My prayers don't work. And I had to totally shift my mindset and realize, you know, that it was her time, you know. And she had been fighting for so long. And that's exactly what he did. And, um... After, you know, it, it took some time for me to get it, right? It took some time for me to understand that and realizing that um, he did answer my prayer, right? He didn't answer it the way that I wanted him to answer, but he did answer my prayer. 
Um, and my post office that I go to, my post office box, I literally have to pass by the street of her house to go to the post office. And I'm always like, oh, she's no longer here. And if ever the kids are with me, they're like, Miss Rochelle lived down there. Miss Rochelle used to live down there. But anyway, let me get off this live so I can go change um, and get ready to walk. I'm not going to be power walking today because of my head, but I am going to move my body a little bit. So I may not get my uh, 3,000 steps in, but I'll get something in. Yes, yes it is. I still... Uh, I still laugh at some of her jokes, you know. So anyway, let me get off this live. I love you all. When I start leaning like this, it's that I just forget we're on live and feel like I'm literally in your home <laughs> talking to you right now. Uh, praying for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I'm not even worried. I am not even worried. I love y'all. Let me go. And um, I'll be live in the group in five minutes. Five minutes. I'll be live in five minutes. Bye, y'all. <laughs>